everybody and welcome back to Athlete Central. Today we are going to discuss the notion of fighters playing it safe and winning a decision. Recently, middleweight champion Israel Adesanya had a fairly uneventful fight with contender Jared Cannonier. Izzy won the decision, but it left a lot to be desired, and pundits, fans, and even celebrities had a lot to say on the matter. Here is Hollywood actor and MMA fan Chris Pratt's reaction to the performance. Easy came out like The Undertaker. Yeah. What was your take on what we saw in those five rounds? Look, I'm going to say this as, uh, as, as humbly as I can. It's like I never stepped through the octagon. I don't know this game. I'm just an actor, but I, I'm not a fan, man. I'm not a fan of coming out like all that talk and then and then just kind of putting on a little bit of a, a pitter patter. I'm like, come on, man. Get, you know, cash on that. Get, you got you to gotta catch that, that promise, you know, of uh, being so badass. And I don't know. I have this. <laughs> I, if I bet with my money, I would have bet on a son, he would have done something like that. But I was hoping to see Cannon near setup. Now, the MMA fan base was quite split on whether they consider this criticism okay or not. So let us know what you think about Pratt's reaction in the comments below. And today, we here at Athlete Central are here to discuss whether fighters should get criticized for taking the path of least resistance, even if that does result in a boring fight for the fans. So, without further ado, let's jump straight into it. It's interesting to see who has the fan. Oh, oh, big left hand. That's it. Wow. When you look at the fighters over the years who have been fan favorites, names like Tony Ferguson, Nate Diaz, Max Holloway, Yuri Prohashka, Tai Tuivasa, they're all two things that link them together. First of all, all of them have great personalities outside of the cage. Watching their interviews is extremely entertaining, and they are generally fun to follow outside of the cage. Secondly, they don't usually have boring fights. Tony and Nate always deliver blood fests. Whether it's from them bleeding or their opponent is irrelevant for the fans. When they fight, fans always tune in, and they are also very blunt and straightforward in the media. against a very tough guy in Michael Johnson. How do you feel about it? Yeah, Conor McGregor, you're taking everything I work for, mother I'm gonna fight you. This is a rat race, but I'm no rat. I'm a turtle, ninja turtle. So which one's your favorite? I like Michael Lennon. When it comes to the other fighters, Max Holloway just lands an absurd amount of strikes and is never afraid to battle. Yuri Prohashka is just wild, swinging with strikes you rarely ever see in the octagon, and Tai Tuivasa just has a bomb of a right hand, so a knockout can happen at any time. All of these fighters, except Yuri Prohashka, have had rough patches in the UFC, but never lost the fans' respect. Tony is still loved despite his four-fight losing streak. Nate remains a fan favorite regardless of his patchy record. Max has lost three fights against the champ and got dominated in the last one, yet still has tons of support. Ty has also maintained his support despite being on a three-fight losing streak a couple of years back. All this would go on to say that fans don't care whether you're winning or losing as long as you're entertaining them. But that is not completely true though. You see, fighters have to be at a certain level of fan favorite for losses to not impact their reputation, and there are fighters who are entertaining inside the cage but not outside of it, and they get put down for unimpressive performances. Justin Gaethje, Yair Rodriguez, Michael Pereira, Shane Burgos, and other fighters have a very entertaining style, but their personality outside the cage does not necessarily appeal to the majority of fans, or some may just be neutral towards. This means that when they have poor performances, despite being entertaining, fans do not hesitate to criticize them. Gaethje has often been criticized for not playing it smart and being a walking punching bag. However, he just does not have boring fights. Still, this does not happen to stop people from judging him poorly as a fighter. Yair also has an extremely flashy style, yet his fighting inconsistency and ability to compete with the top dogs at 145 pounds puts him at the forefront for a lot of criticism. Michael Pereira has been lambasted for his fighting style despite being one of the most unorthodox fighters in the UFC. Just check out our video on the most unorthodox fighters in the UFC down below. 
Now, just because fighters who are entertaining but not that popular amongst fans get criticized does not mean that fighters who appeal to the fans yet have uneventful fights are praised. Darren Till is a prime example of this. The Brit is one of the most entertaining fighters outside of the cage, but his recent performances have left a lot to be desired. He's had uneventful fights against the likes of Wonderboy and Kelvin Gastelum, and in his losses often gets beat without showing any real desire to finish his opponent. Fighters like Islam Makachev also get criticized for the way in which they win. The wrestling style? It doesn't appeal to the masses. MMA fans are out for blood, and constant grappling is not going to give it to them. Of course, the fan base is divided when it comes to him because of his affiliation with Habib. A lot of people like him, and a lot of people don't. But while some fans appreciate the craft that goes into grappling, others want to see an exciting stand-up affair. Someone like Kamaru Usman, who is often viewed as a boring fighter because of his similar style, very grappling heavy. His personality is also perceived as cringy and unlikable. But recent performances have turned quite a few fans around. He's only had one relatively boring fight in his last five outings, the control-based grappling game plan in the first Masvidal fight. But apart from that, he had two amazing fights with Colby Covington, knocked Gilbert Burns out in their title fight, and also became the first person to ever knock Masvidal out. Those show-stopping performances gained him respect from the fans, and he increased his popularity by being more fan-friendly without changing his outside-the-cage persona. His African brother, Israel Adesanya, has gone through what seems like an opposite shift. During his early UFC days, fans loved his entertaining, high-level kickboxing style. He was getting knockout wins and having the all-time classic wars with the likes of Kelvin Gastelum. It's been in his last five victories where he has performed like the polar opposite of Kamaru Usman. Izzy's only entertaining fight was the knockout against Paulo Costa, except that Izzy had one of the most boring title fights ever against Yoel Romero, uneventful outings against Marvin Vittori and Robert Whittaker, and his last tedious victory over Jared Cannonier. Adesanya's fan base has certainly shrunk because of these outings, but given what we previously discussed, is it really worth it to put the entertainment of fans above personal success in the sport? Adesanya has chosen to be tactical against opponents who pose a serious threat to the rest of the division. We saw how Whitaker went on a three-fight tear before getting his rematch. Had Izzy gone into the fight with a riskier game plan in order to excite the fans, the thing that fans would question wouldn't be his entertainment value, but his ability. He would lose his belt, and in the future he would also lose pay-per-view points, which is a hefty chunk of money. And speaking of money, Izzy was offered a new mega deal before that Whitaker fight, and that was because he was a strong champion, who was clearing out every top contender in his division. Again, if Izzy was reckless against Vittori in his bout prior to the contract, things would have worked out for him differently financially. Marvin is a great wrestler, and a mistake from Izzy could easily land him on his back. Now, while being a fan favorite is important, it's definitely more important to be in good favor with the promotion. Just look at Nate Diaz and Sam Alvey. Nate is a superstar, the fans love him, and so do pundits, but it, since he's not an easy fighter to deal with and he hasn't really had much success in the octagon as of late, Dana White is literally feeding him to the wolf for his last fight against Hamzat Chemaev. Sam Alvey, on the other hand, has won none of his last eight fights. Almost every fan is questioning why the man is still in the UFC, but since he is a company man, he gets to keep his job despite his losing streak. I mean, just take a look at some of these tweets. This just goes to show that fans' perception of a fighter does not mean a lot when it comes to the UFC's decision making. Popularity may increase the chances of a title opportunity, but once a fighter has already climbed that ladder and has been a good company man, his job is to defend the belt to keep his place at the top of the ladder, not to please the fans. So thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Make sure to like and subscribe to Never Miss an Athlete Central video. Comment what video you want to see us make next. And until next time, stay safe.